What's going on? Welcome to Tech with Sean. Everybody wants a gaming laptop that doesn't compromise on power, but that can be thin and light for portability. This Asus GU502, aka the Zephyrus M, tries to do both. It has a very sleek and thin form factor, but it's packing some serious power with the 9750H and a RTX 2060. Is it too thin and light for its own good though? Let's take a look and find out. Alright, now under the hood, this ASUS GU502 Zephyrus M is packing the i7 9750H, that's the 6 core 12 thread high performance mobile processor. It's got 16 gigabytes of DDR4, although it only comes in single channel. And then uh, it has an RTX 2060 6 gigabyte and a 1 terabyte SSD. In the US, this version is sold at Best Buy, but I think it's also available from other retailers. It has a 144 hertz IPS screen, and um, it has around 300 nits of brightness, but it does not have G-Sync. Now it's kind of criminal for a laptop of this caliber to ship with single channel memory in my opinion, and it does hamper performance. So for testing and for all this stuff, I have installed another 16 gigabyte DIMM in the open slot. So this is now running 32 gigabytes of RAM in dual channel. The chassis and build on this is really nice. It has a metallic lid, the bottom is plastic, and it just has some screws. All you have to do is take the screws out and then um, put a clip in at this little ridge, like a guitar pick or something. And once you just clip up these two edges, the whole bottom just pops right off and you can get at the drives and the RAM slots inside pretty easily. Checking out the IO around the outside of the unit, on the left side you have the power adapter hole, that's the official term. Then you have a uh, ethernet plug, you have a full size HDMI, USB, and then uh, dedicated headphone and microphone jacks. There's no IO on the back, just a little Republic of Gamers badge and some ventilation. Then over on the right side, you've got two USBs, you got a USB-C, which is pretty nice to have, and a Kensington lock. There's also no I.O. on the front. Now this only comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM and it's in single channel and it's soldered to the motherboard. So there is one open DIMM slot and you can manually add one more uh, memory stick in there to get up and running in dual channel. I'll put a link to some compatible RAM in the description below. It's an Amazon affiliate link and if you guys shop with those it does help the channel so we appreciate it. Now this is a thin and light laptop but unfortunately maybe because of that it doesn't pass the one finger test so if you try to open it up uh, quickly with just one finger it's not gonna happen. Okay so taking a look here at the inside of the unit we've got some really slim bezels on this display so that's a big improvement from the previous generation. It has a pretty decent uh, keyboard. It's nothing super special but it does have per key RGB. There's no number pad. It has the usual Asus laptop keyboard software, so that's either a good or a bad thing, I guess, depending on if you like it or not. Inside, it's kind of a textured uh, finish or paint or something on the magnesium, so it's a little bit rubbery. I think it's supposed to minimize um, fingerprinting. It's not too bad. It's not super amazing. It doesn't feel like an all-metal MacBook, but it doesn't feel like a super plasticky, you know, Acer Nitro or something either. The trackpad is pretty decent. Um, it's not super huge, but it's not too small either. And it does have Windows Precision drivers, so that's always a bonus. The speakers are pretty decent. Um, I think by default they come with some calibration or, you know, like a music setting or something on them in the Asus software but my recommendation is just to turn the EQ off. Uh, personally, when I did that, the audio sounded way better and um, more importantly, it was way louder. So if you want them to be louder, uh, take a look in the Asus Sonic Suite stuff or whatever they call it and just turn off the EQ or play around with it and find something that sounds better for you.
Okay, so this Zephyr SM has a really nice build quality and a thin chassis, and uh, it has the power to deliver a good gaming experience. But because of its form factor, this, I think because of the form factor at least, but this thing gets roast and hot, man. Um, at its default settings, within just a few minutes of gameplay, I was up into like the mid 80s to 90s, and the the surface of the laptop up near the screen was like hot to the touch. It felt like I could lay a strip of bacon up there and you know, it would be done by the time you respawned the next time. <laughs> but yeah, at the default speeds, this thing was just super hot. So what I did was I opened up throttle stop, I went in there and I gave the core and the cache an undervolt, and then I lowered the uh, boost clocks a little bit, especially for the five and six core. And so, this actually kept the clock speeds higher than what it was throttling down to after a few minutes of gameplay. Um, but it did, uh, I think by lowering the voltage or whatever, you know, it did help keep the temperatures a little bit lower. But even with these reduced settings, it was still very hot. Um, the laptop still felt like hot to the touch and the fans were just screaming loud. Um, I had it on turbo for a while and my wife was giving me looks. She was like, is that thing gonna be okay? <laughs> and uh, I ended up playing on the, it was called performance mode. I think it used to be called balanced, but now there's silent, performance, and turbo. And the silent is insane um, for gaming. You really just wanna use that for browsing or something because stuff will just, you know, instantly rocket up to just throttling temperature. Um, turbo, also kind of insane because it sounds like it's literally a rocket uh, taken off because you know the fans are ramped up so high and I don't know if it's just the RPMs or because they're crammed in there so loud but the fans on turbo just it sounds nuts I'll put an audio clip in here so you can hear it But on performance mode, you know, it kind of throttles down a little bit to almost silent when you're not gaming. And then when it's under load, it does ramp up, but it's not as loud as it is on turbo mode. So I wanted to tweak stuff to make it work on performance mode because I think that's just going to be the best all around laptop experience. Okay, so that's all about the laptop itself. Um, now let's get some gameplay going and we'll see how it really does and what matters for a gaming laptop the gaming okay first up we have forza horizon 4 and we're running this at 1080p and we have the graphics on ultra setting and this was able to do just about 100 frames per second here on the 2060 the cpu uh, surprisingly though got pretty hot as usual uh, in this game it got up to over 80c which was kind of surprising because this actually will run on a potato pc it was an Xbox One game, and that has, I think, a 1.6 or 1.8 gigahertz CPU. So this um, got pretty warm, but it was able to do over 90 frames per second. Next up, we have Rocket League, and we have this on 1080p at pretty much maxed out settings. And uh, I limited the frame rate to 144 just to help keep things smooth and to keep the you know, thing from just getting hot for the sake of getting hot. But this was a really smooth gameplay experience, um, as you would hope from a over $1,500 laptop uh, playing Rocket League. <laughs> uh, it looked really nice and vivid on the IPS screen though. It's a fun game. It may not be the most stressful one to test out your new gaming PC, but you know, a lot of people enjoy it, so I figured I'd throw it in here. Next up, we got Red Dead Redemption 2, and you can see the settings I'm using here. It's a mix of all types of stuff. I was trying to hit, you know, around 60 frames per second. And this actually came up kind of short. Um, it was able to do 60 in some of the scenes, and uh, this is the benchmark, but I did play the game some, and it just kept dipping. Um, you can see I have VSync on here in the uh, benchmark. I was trying to just, you know, hit a stable 60 but this wasn't even able to do that. You'll see here in the next part of the benchmark, there's quite a few dips below 60, and the GPU is not reaching full saturation, and it doesn't look like the CPU 
is really, you know, hitting a super high utilization either. So I'm not sure exactly what the bottleneck was, but this system did not want to run uh, Red Dead 2 very well. I was actually surprised. Um, we looked at the Walmart EV00 laptop, and that was the one that was their Black Friday $1,000 deal. And I thought that that played Red Dead 2 a lot better than this thing did, which that was really surprising to me. But if you look up at the afterburner overlay, you can see that even with our reduced settings and the undervolting and everything, we're still getting up to 80C just here in the benchmark, and we're not able to hold 60 frames per second. And yeah, that GPU utilization just is all over the place and not reaching its uh, full usage. So I don't know what was going on with this system. So I was playing through just some campaign mode on the Call of Duty 4 remaster, and I wanted to record this because if you look up there at the afterburner overlay, um, you can see that we're only at like 45 to like 50% utilization on the CPU and a uh, low GPU utilization also, but it's not pushing out that 144 frames per second. I thought that in this older game, um, I'd be able to really, you know, take advantage of the 144 hertz display, but it just did not want to push it out for whatever reason. Next up, we got Assassin's Creed Odyssey. This is a more taxing game, and um, going through here, you can see that, again, I have a mix of settings, uh, you know, just trying to get it looking the best that you can. And uh, again, I have it, you know, V-Sync, um, trying to do 60 frames per second. And again, this uh, thing just keeps jumping around. It keeps dipping uh, down into the 50s. Uh, the CPU is only, you know, like halfway utilized. I've played this smoother on lesser CPUs, so I know that the 6 cores, 12 threads at over 3 gigahertz should do a decent job playing this, but it's not pushing the GPU all the way, and we're seeing lots of frame dips, and it really wasn't a very smooth experience, honestly, when I was playing through it. But it's a fun game. I don't know if maybe with a different mix of settings or something, uh, you could get it running better, but... Honestly, I don't think that turning down graphics or anything would help a lot because it's not, um, you know, bottlenecking the GPU, at least from the usage statistics that I can see. Alright, well, that was a look at the Asus Zephyr SM, the GU502GV to be specific. So, that was the build quality, we saw some gameplay, and, uh, you know, those were just the tweaks that I did to get it running like that, you can do whatever, you can let it run all out, you can throttle it down more if you want less temperatures and noise, but overall, for its price point, I really don't think I could recommend this thing. For, you know, what you're spending or being asked to spend, you can do better. Um, and especially shipping it with single channel memory, that's kind of like the extra nail in the coffin or whatever you want to call it, because the MSRP on this thing, I think originally is like $1,800. So for an $1,800 gaming laptop with a 9750H to ship with single channel memory, I feel like that's almost insulting to the customer. Um, you really should expect better performance. And I think you should be able to expect better thermals, even in a small form factor. So if you get some, you know, screaming killer deal on it, and you just like the looks and you're gonna be happy with a little bit lower performance uh, because of the form factor and that's a trade-off you wanna make, then it may be worth looking at it. Um, but if you're just looking for a 2060 gaming laptop and you want a good experience, you don't want screaming loud fans and you don't have to worry about you know, temperatures and throttling, then I'd honestly say give this one a pass. I don't know, I've, it's the only one of the Zephyruses or Zephyri that I've had the ability to check out. So, you know, traditionally they have that air gap at the back and I think the other Zephyrus still has that. So that seems like that would let in a lot more volume of air and make a big difference in the temperatures. So maybe that's the Achilles heel of this model and the other one performs better, but I unfortunately don't have it to test. So, you know, it is what it is. Well, thank you for watching. If you liked this video, give us a like down below. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you in the next video.